This is going to be about King Charles III, so I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video, and if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe, and thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So as far as I can tell, it's time for an update. We have a new sovereign, new monarch, King Charles III. And so let's do a little reading and see how uh, things are going to work out for Charles. Uh, we'll ask about uh, Queen Camilla. We'll ask about uh, the new Prince of Wales, um, uh, William. And then we'll also look into um, Camilla, the Queen Consort. So uh, we'll check all of that out for uh, King Charles. All right, so this will be just a cold read on King Charles. <clears throat> Let's see what the cards can tell us. So those of you who've been watching for a while may have noticed that I've got a different uh, uh, background. Actually, what I've, all I've done is turn my desk around. Uh, it was facing uh, that uh, this window, and so my back was to the uh, open door of this room, uh, which led to a hallway. So now I've just changed the desk around so that this bookcase, which has always been there, is behind me. And I think that gives the camera something to, something to focus on. Hopefully this will be a better picture. And our friend, uh, the lion, is still uh, in the corner there. So there we go. So King Charles, what can the cards tell us about the new sovereign? Make sure I get these correct. Um, something that, of course, he's known would happen. Uh, he, uh, separate from the queen, so she became sovereign at the tender age of 26, I think it was, so her public persona wasn't really formed. And um, his public persona is very much formed over these last 73 years. I think that's his age right now. So it'll be interesting. Uh, you know, we expect... Uh, or maybe are used to a sovereign who we don't can't read okay we don't really know what their uh, positions are but we know what uh, former Prince Charles uh, uh, what his positions were and so what will King Charles how will he um, how will everything look with him but before we do anything let's have just a moment of meditation So King Charles III, even his name uh, was a surprise. We didn't uh, know uh, what uh, royal or regnal name he might choose. And uh, some have said that looking at his signature, uh, Charles R for Rex, King, um, is, uh, is something that's interesting. So this will be a full Celtic cross. Uh, we'll start out with six cards and then build from there. So King Charles the third what can the cards tell us about King Charles the third let's just do a general read how many cards do I have here one two three four five six that's six okay King Charles what can the cards tell us about this new king okay the signifier then Eight of Wands. This is very interesting. So this is telling us there's lots of issues uh, for this new king to deal with. Um, so that's interesting. Car, uh, wands are actions, forward movement, uh, fire. Um, and this person here is looking up at all these issues, getting ready to rain down on them, and looks very uh, trepidatious. How do you like that word, trepidatious? So that's the signifier. Uh, lots of issues 
happening and worried about them. The challenge to that for King Charles III, well, look at this. This is the Ten of Cups. And the Ten of Cups is really happy family, uh, emotionally, okay? So what does this tell us? The challenge to all of these issues coming down is happy family. Does this mean that, uh, that this is somehow he's going to try to put that family back together, bring perhaps Harry back into the fold? So the challenge to all these issues is, is, uh, is getting it emotionally just right. The, I've got a, a, a light in this uh, right here. I'm going to have to figure out how, what is that and how to get rid of it. But anyway, the base of this reading for King Charles is uh, the Ten of Wands. And again, just like here, wands are actions, plans, forward movement, fire. And uh, this Ten of Wands is a heavy load to move forward. But you'll notice in this card here that this uh, sovereign, even though it's still a woman, has got all of these uh, issues under control. Is this telling us that the queen kind of left things in a manageable uh, fashion in some order that may um, hold uh, things in place for a while? The past of this reading for King Charles III is the Seven of Swords. And in the past, we have Seven of Swords, a Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. But the Seven of Swords is Theft and Betrayal. But that's in the past. So is this the opinionated Prince Charles in the past, taking advantage of that um, that ability he had to uh, to be a little more um, vocal, but that's in the past. So, in the sky of this reading for King Charles III, the Knight of Swords, Swords, Truth, Justice, Rules, Law. The Knight is the member of the royal court who's going to fight for those things, and so in the sky, this is Charles showing that he will be the knight, the defender of truth, justice, rules, and law. Um, the final outcome for the first part of this uh, full Celtic cross for King Charles, look at this, the Hierophant. So this is beautiful. Now the Hierophant is, is typically the government or the, or the structure of, uh, of how a thing is done. The monarchy, I'm going to guess, is what this stands for. So it's very interesting and very appropriate that the final outcome for the first part of this with all these issues and all these hopes is in fact the structure, the monarchy. Very interesting. So let's go ahead and get the next uh, four cards for this full Celtic cross and see what we've got for that. I've got a light off to the side here. I wonder if I turn this light a bit, if it'll help me with that. We'll see. So four cards for the for King. Charles, how will this uh, finish up for him? The uh, very self of that question, what about King Charles? How are things going to start off for him? Okay, so we start off with the Queen of Coins. So this is, the coins are value, worth, sometimes money, but this Queen of Coins, I think this is taking us right back to Queen Elizabeth II, telling us that she left her value there for him to pick up and carry on with. That's the signifier of that very question about how uh, Charles, King Charles will, will do. Uh, the environment that that's in is this four of coins. Again, coins are value, worth, and the four of coins is trying to hold on to your value, keeping everything in place, not losing uh, your foothold on that. So that's very interesting and very telling. The hopes and the fears for King Charles is, look at this, so the hanged, man and this hanged man is hanging on that big coin on that on that value so this is telling us that king charles is um the hopes and the fears the the fear is that he gets hung up on, on uh, those issues and the hopes is that he can hang on to his value and then the final outcome for king charles uh how will things go for him right here is the seven of cups Cups are emotion, and the Seven of Cups is illusion and delusion. So it's also having lots of choices, lots of ways to make a thing come uh, about. So not necessarily, uh, you know, like a puff of spoke or some magic or some, some misdirection, but knowing that there's lots of choices and making the right choices. So we'll read it again very quickly, and I may even pull another card or two at the end of this. But we're asking the question, so how will things go? 
for this new King Charles III. And it starts out with lots of issues with his Eight of Wands, lots of issues to deal with, okay, and worried about those things. The uh, challenge to that then is with this Ten of Cups is happy family emotionally. So the challenge to all these issues is at the same time pu trying to pull that a new royal uh, uh, structure, the, the the new structure of the royal family, trying to pull that all together. And maybe that means bringing Harry back into the fold too. The, uh, the base of this with this Ten of Wands is all of those issues bundled up together here. And it looks like the queen has made sure that these things are, are, are put together in a way that they can be carried forward. This cumbersome uh, uh, bundle of issues can be dealt with. It looks like she left it uh, in good condition. In the past of this reading uh, for uh, King Charles is the Seven of Swords, theft and betrayal, and that's dealing with truth, justice, rules, and law. And so this is in the past though. Theft and betrayal, truth, justice, rules, and law in the past. Is that is he shedding his princely um, um, uh, veneer uh, for his new kingly uh, stance. And in the sky of this reading for King Charles is the Knight of Swords, the defender of truth, justice, rules, and law. And then the likely outcome is very telling because we end up with the Hierophant, which is the very structure, has to be the monarchy. So the monarchy will be what reigns in all of these decisions. Now, the, the very question, we go to the last four, which is uh, how will things go for King Charles III? And we start out with the Queen of Coins, and that's telling us that the Queen left things in good condition. So that value, she left all the value in, in as good a condition as she could. And then the environment that that's in with this four coins is wanting to make sure that everything is held in place. All of that value is controlled and held into place. And then the sky with the hopes and the fears, I'm sorry, is uh, the hanged man. So the hopes and the fears, the hopes is that he can't hang himself on that value that's left, and the fears is that he does get hung up on uh, on that same same thing. And the final outcome for that, with the seven of cups, cups are emotions, but this is telling us, and instead of illusion, in illusion, let me get a drink of water. <coughs> this is telling us that there's lots of choices to deal with here. And I think we're going to leave it right there. That sounds just about right. Like I always say, I'm never sure how the cards are going to come out, obviously. And uh, I just read what they say. I hope you uh, enjoy and agree with what I'm saying. If you don't, let me know. Just say something in the comments, but be nice. Okay? Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. Okay, so these are, again, some amazing cards. The Touchstone Tarot by Cat Black, who's an Australian artist. She lives in on the western, uh, southwestern, I think, part of Australia. But the box is so great, you really feel like you got something worthwhile in that. The instruction booklet is, um, is very good, as a matter of fact. It's not in color, but it's got some really good uh, ideas for divination. Tells you a little bit about the artist, so that's handy. And then the cards, I mean, look how beautiful they are. Even just the back is gilding. You can feel that gilding right there. But the front, these cards are not hard to decipher, but they really focus in on the face. Of You'll notice all of these are, you know, from the bust up, from the waist almost up. So they really make you identify with the face when you're trying to make the interpretation. Cat Black is amazing. Um, I don't know how... Uh, she came up with this, but she came with some beautiful, beautiful artwork and all digital. So there's not a painting somewhere that looks like this. Of course, these are made from actual uh, paintings. And, you know, I, I do this so that everybody can look at these cards and maybe you don't get to see uh, kind of different kind of cards. And, um, and this gives you that opportunity. I always wanted to see what the tarot readers were using, what the cards looked like when I was uh, only just uh, being a viewer. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now. You really make a big difference. Thank you.